Hi, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, and thank you for joining me. This is our children's time for this week. If you see here, I've got some peacock feathers. They're, they're beautiful. And that goes with the story I'm going to tell. I've told it before, but when I told it before, I didn't have the feathers, and I didn't even have the movie. But this time, I do. So I wanted to share it. The name of the story is, the title of the story is Peter Peacock, Prima Jerk. So here, let's go and hope you enjoy. It was a beautiful day. The kind of day that you could appreciate only after a week of solid rain. A week of being cooped up inside, coming out only to get something to eat, then going quickly back in before you got any more wet. And then suddenly the rain was gone. The sun was shining and all the animals were taking advantage of the glorious day. They had to be careful, however, because a lot of people were wandering through the woods too, enjoying the sun and the fine weather. In fact, the road that ran through the woods was full of cars and small trucks. One day, all at once, there was a loud sound, hard to describe. Some of the animals ran to the edge of the woods to see what was going on. A truck had tried to go around some slow cars, had skidded off the road because it was still wet, and banged into a telephone pole. No one was seriously hurt, but some cages had fallen off the truck. And everyone stopped to look while two men checked the cages to make sure they were okay and put them back on the truck. And no one noticed a large bird walking out of one of the cages and heading into the woods. No one, that is, except the animals. And they quickly decided to let the people do their thing and to go check up on the bird. Was he okay? What was he like? They found him by the stream getting some water. He was a strange looking bird, unlike any other bird they'd ever seen, big, as big as a small child, with something weird on his head and something dragging behind him. They just stood there looking at him, not really knowing what to say. After a few minutes, the big bird looked up, saw the animal standing around and smiled. Not a warm, friendly smile, but rather an arrogant smile. My name is Lord Peter Peacock he said. You may call me Lord Peter because that's who I am. At that, some of the younger animals got the giggles. No one ever used fancy names like that in the woodlands. They called each other by their first names. Lord Peter sure sounded like a strange name. Hey, Petey, one animal shouted. What kind of bird are you? Lord Peter didn't even deign to look at the small animal. He started speaking again, like some kind of nobility addressing the inferior folk. My schedule is as follows. I get up late in the morning to eat. I wander around for a few hours, take some rest in the mid-afternoon, and then I'm up again around supper time. Of course, I tolerate no disturbances when I am asleep. No children playing, no animals screeching. I demand absolute quiet. More animals started to laugh. Absolute quiet. Who did he think it was? Maybe there's a reason he'd been in a cage. Lord Peter looked at the animals and they looked back at him. It's time for my rest. You may go. <laughs> Charlie Chipmunk couldn't help himself. He started to laugh out loud. This bird was so funny. He was laughing so hard he fell down and just started rolling over, still laughing. Suddenly, whap, something struck him and it hurt. He wasn't laughing anymore. He started to cry. Lord Peter had hit him. You can't do that to my friend, Matthew McMouse cried out. I don't care who you are. Lord Peter stopped attacking Johnny Chipmunk, froze, then quietly majestically lifted up his head and opened his tail. So just, there he is. He 
open up his tail. The animals gasped in awe. They had never seen such a beautiful animal in their life. Such a huge tail and so many colors on it. All were speeches, including Charlie Chipmunk and Matthew McMouse. After what seemed a few minutes, Lord Speaker, Lord Peter started to speak. I am the most important attraction in the zoo. People come from all over just to see me. They pay lots of money just to see me. I was on a trip going to a special exhibit so more people could see me when the accident happened and my cage door opened. I decided I needed a holiday. I expect you to wait on me. Suddenly, his tail snapped shut and he threw back his head, daring anyone to challenge him. Of course, no one dared do anything. They had never seen anything like a peacock before and really believed that he was something special. They could understand why people would spend lots of money to see him. And they got to see him for free. Who could pass up a deal like that? And so for the next few days, Lord Peter was waited on hand and foot. The young animals played when he was awake and were very still and very quiet when he fell asleep. It's hard to imagine children sitting quietly doing nothing, but all the animals, young animals were there by his side while he slept, just in case he opened up that tail. And sometimes when he woke up, he did open up the tail and everyone would ooh and ah at the sight. Lord Peter certainly knew how to enjoy himself. I itch, he'd say, and lift up a webbed foot so some lucky animal had the pleasure of scratching it. I'm hungry, he would say, and open up his mouth so some lucky animal had the privilege of feeding him. <clears throat> and if anyone started to grumble at his special treatment, he would quickly silence them with the look, then open up that fantastic tail and ask in a very quiet voice, you wish to challenge me about something? Well, this went on for two or maybe three days. Uh, and then some of the animals began getting bored. The beautiful tail just didn't seem so beautiful. And they really didn't want to wait around all day just in case he decided to fed out his plumage. So some of the older animals began to go home and get on with their lives. And the younger animals stayed a bit longer, but they got bored too. They weren't having fun. And they really didn't enjoy scratching his feet when he was itchy or feeding him when he was hungry. After all, if they found something good to eat, they wanted to eat it. So they began to wander away. But Peter Peacock was a pretty smart peacock and he knew how to keep a captive audience. He simply puffed up his chest, strutted around, bellowing out orders to the other animals. And you know what? For some reason, they always listened to him and did what he tells them to. That is, until one day when it started to rain. And it kept raining and raining and raining. And Peter Peacock got wetter and wetter and wetter. He didn't have any place to go in that side and out of the rain. He didn't look impressive any longer. He wasn't even beautiful. He could strut all he wanted and call out orders to whoever was there, but he looked like a big wet bird shouting. Charlie Chipmunk didn't mean to do it, but he couldn't help himself. He took a look at this big wet bird with sopping tail and matted down hair, strutting around the woods as though he were someone important. He started laughing again. In a few minutes, the other animals started laughing too. And the more Lord Peter tried to intimidate them by glaring at them and puffing out his chest, the more they laughed. He was so wet. Finally, Lord Peter declared in that impressive voice, that didn't sound so impressive coming out of a wet bird. 
You don't appreciate how gifted I am. You aren't worthy of my presence. I am going back to the zoo. And with a final toss of his head, he left the animals there in the woods and returned to the road. That's where the zookeepers found him a few hours later. And in a short time, he was back in a cage and taken away. The animals never saw Lord Peter Peacock again, but every so often they would have a contest to see who could be the most pompous of them all. Usually it was tiny Matthew McMouse who had them rolling in the field with his impersonations of a big wet bird who thought he really was special. I hope you enjoyed the story. You know, a lot of times we, we judge by appearances, we judge by what we see or how people behave. And that really doesn't show us what a person is really like. God sees the inside. He sees our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows our struggles, our fears, our, our joys, what we're complaining about, what we're not complaining about. He knows us. And he, we don't need to do anything to impress him. He knows what's special about us. And each of us is special in some way, just because God created us. So that's our children's story today. And let's pray, join in prayer. Dear Jesus, you remind us over and over that what's on the outside is not as important as what's on the inside. How we look is not as important as who we are at least not for you and not for God, your Father, our Father. So thank you. Help us to be the best we can be. Help us to discover the special gifts that you've given each and every single one of us. Help us to realize how truly remarkable we are and everyone is. Lord, hear our prayer, for we offer it in your name. Amen. Well, once again, um, it's Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, and thank you for joining me for this children's time. I'll see you next week. I hope you have a really blessed week. Take care and goodbye.